In this video, I'm going to show you how to control your Elgato prompter with your Stream Deck. Now, Elgato does provide a plugin for the prompter, so you can use it with your Stream Deck, but confusingly, it's actually called Camera Hub because that's the software that actually controls the prompter. Now, I've made a couple of videos which you can see up here regarding how to get the prompter working and some other bits and pieces, but this video is going to be showing you how you can control some of the wonderful features in the Elgato prompter at the touch of a button with your Stream Deck. So let's get on with it. All right, let's get that pesky Camera Hub software. You have to go to marketplace.elgato.com and you'll be presented with this website. They've changed it recently. Now all your plugins and Stream Deck icons and stuff like that is from the marketplace, but never fear. So let's click on Stream Deck and let's just search for Camera Hub. And you simply just click on this, click on get, and then it's going to ask you to sign in. You'll need an account to sign in and get access to this Camera Hub software, but it is free. Once you've signed in, gone to your cart and clicked on it, it will install it into your Stream Deck as part of the built-in profiles. And just keep in mind that Camera Hub obviously controls the Elgato cameras as well as Prompter. Super confusing, but thank you anyway, Elgato. Let's get into Stream Deck and show you how to configure this. So you've got your Camera Hub Stream Deck plugin installed. Let's go over to the Stream Deck application. As you can see here, so we've got Stream Deck on my left and on the right is the actual prompter. And you can see if I drag in my Promos, you can see that this is an actual screen share of the prompter. So when we go through the quick demo here, you'll see what I will be seeing on the prompter itself. All right, so here's the Stream Deck application. And as you can see, we've got a ton of different plugins here. The one we're interested in is Camera Hub. So let's open this up. Now, Camera Hub is an application for both the cameras and the Elgato prompter, making it a tad confusing. A lot of people were asking, well, where is the plugin for the prompter? Well, it's right here in the Camera Hub, as you can see. And there's a couple of options that aren't relevant <laughs> to the prompter, which is select camera, adjust camera, reset camera, and all that kind of stuff. The ones we're interested in is the prompter control, prompter display, prompter mode, prompter appearance, and prompter scrolling. Now, these actions within the Stream Deck have multi-purposes, which means that one particular function can do multiple things. So I'll give you a couple of examples to show you how this works. But first, let's quickly go into the Camera Hub software and let me show you some of the features on how you would control the prompter just from the Camera Hub because that'll make it more relevant to show you then, well, we can actually do these with the Stream Deck. Let's map them and show you how that works. Let's first take a look at the Camera Hub software that comes with the prompter and this will make it easier for you to see what kind of control we have over the prompter and then how we can map that to the Stream Deck. So here is the Camera Hub software as you can see and just to show you that this prompter is a real prompter I'm just going to drag my YouTube video over there and then just play that for a second and because it's a prompter obviously I'm screen sharing exactly what you are seeing or what I'm seeing should I say within the prompter, but you get the same type of view. So let's just close that down for a second so you can see my promos in here. So the prompter is controlled by the Camera Hub. This is the beta version of the Camera Hub software I'm using right now. And there'll be a link in the description below and over my shoulder somewhere for that video to give you an idea about what the beta software actually does and types of things. Some of the new features are power buttons, but I'll show you if I turn the power on and off, you can see that the prompter is going on and off. You can control the brightness and so on. But obviously the prompter comes into its own when you have the text that you want to show as a teleprompter function. So within the content here, you can see that we've got display, text and chat. Chat is really at the moment only for Twitch. So I don't use that, but I just obviously use it either as display or text. If I click on text, this will now show you the um, script that I've just done for Opus Pro. And if I hit the play button down here, 
you can obviously see it playing through. Now the controls that you have with the Camera Hub are things like changing the font size, the margins, line spacing, all kinds of stuff. And then the speed of the chapters as they're going through. So you can see I'm speeding it up and I'm slowing it down. So Camera Hub obviously is pretty good with regards to all the control over it. But the good thing is that you can do all this now from your Stream Deck. So you can control all these functions of Camera Hub to control your prompter with your Stream Deck. So let's head over to the Stream Deck configuration and I'll show you some of the buttons that you can assign and how you control your prompter. So the prompter can be controlled with any Stream Deck model. It doesn't really matter. I have the Stream Deck Mini and the Plus. The Plus gives you different controls because obviously it has rotary controls and stuff like that. But the Stream Deck plugin for the Camera Hub will work with any Stream Deck. So let's head over to the Stream Deck software. So this is my Stream Deck Plus. I've got an empty page at the moment. So I just want to show you some of the controls with that. So let's grab the first one, which is prompt to control. Let's pop it into one of the buttons. And over here on my right is the prompter. So you can see it's an actual prompter display. If I brought in a Google Chrome window, for example, you can see that it's there and scrolling and all that lovely stuff. So the first one is the play pause. Now, some of these buttons have multifunctions. So if you click on the drop down menu, you can see that we've also got scroll and select. So let's start with the play pause. Now, obviously, this relates to any script that you've got. So I'm going to go over to the text and turn on the text on the prompter. This is the script that I had before. And if I just press the button now on the stream deck, this one, you'll see that the prompter starts playing super duper and you've hit it again it will pause the display. So you can also do a couple of other things with the same button. So if we scroll down and pick scroll, this will now scroll the text in the prompter to the top. So if you see I'm hitting the button, it's just going to scroll it to the top. So it's just a step by step scroll to get you to the top or a particular place within your script. And the one at the bottom, I'm not going to bother with at the moment because that's just for chat messages. And um, I'm not using that one. So the next one down is text. So I can actually go between my different chapters. So on the Camera Hub software, you'll know that you can create chapters in your script. So I've got a few set up here. So I'm just going to toggle through. And this is going to... Oh, not previous. Should be next. Sorry. Let's go on here. I let them previous, so I'm just going to go to next chapter. So you can create multiple buttons with next or previous chapter. So let's just copy this button here and put it there. And we'll do uh, previous for that one and next for that one. So now I'm just toggling between, as you can see, the different chapters on my script. The other thing that you can do with the same button is let's have a look you got previous and then we'll scroll down you go first last and then index so let's just go to first and that will take me straight to the first chapter on my script so really useful button there if i use the same button which is the prompter control and pop that now into one of the rotary dials of the stream deck plus i will get similar functionality. So play and pause. So down here now, this is the play and pause button. So I'm playing through the script again. I'm going to pause the script. Uh, so the setting there is set for control. If I was to uh, play and now turn the rotary control, you can't see me turning it. But what I'm doing is I'm actually skipping through some of the text. So I'm getting, you know, the same as I had before with the buttons, but now I'm just scrolling through. I'm just going to pause that. And if I do the rotary controls, you can hear me turning it. I'm just winding the script back. And then um, the other button we can have, I think that's it actually for that one. And then you can jump to chat if you had chat open. So for the rotary control, it's just play, pause, turn the rotary dial, and you can skip through your text. Let's 
Let's take a look at another couple of buttons. So we just created our first simple button to control the prompter with the Stream Deck plugins. Let's go back to the Stream Deck software and look at our Camera Hub plugin. You may have noticed on the top here that we have two options as well, one called Keys and one called Dials. And this is because I'm using the Stream Deck Plus. Because the Stream Deck Plus has both keys and rotary dial controls, the software is actually pretty clever because it's actually showing you which functions are available depending on which mode or which keys that you want to use. So if I click on keys, for example, within the camera hub, it's showing me everything that's available that I can assign to a particular button or key. If I click on dials, it's now just given me a subset of what I can use with a rotary control because obviously you can't use every function within the plugin with a rotary control. So it's pretty clever, right? So it's just showing you which one I can use if I'm going to assign a rotary control as opposed to having it on a key. So we just did the prompter control. Let's just go back to keys again. Let's do a prompter display. So if we click on this and just drag this first of all into one of the keys, you get one option here, I think, and it's just called brightness. And I can just change the brightness of my prompter with one button control. So if I just want to turn it all the way down, so for example, if I'm talking and using it as a confidence monitor, sometimes you do get some glare on the prompter, or from the prompter, should I say, on your glasses. So in this particular case, I'm just going to wind this down to maybe 32%. And if you watch the prompter, if I click on the key, you'll see that it's already dimmed the display. And if I whack it up all the way to 100%, as it is now, if I press the key again, it's going to make, oops, if I press the key again, sorry, let me do that, then it's going, it should, come on, it should make it 100%. It has made it 100%, sorry, that took some time, that's a bit weird, but it should have made it 100%. Let's just try that again real quick, so wind it down to this value, a low value here, click on the key, drops it down, click on the value to 100%, come on, click and drag to 100%, click on that again, yeah, all right, that was me. My bad. All right, so that's just using a key to control the brightness with a set particular figure. Let's just delete that and grab that same prompter control, but this time in dials. You don't have to select dials. You can just do the prompter display and pop it straight into your dial. And now you get a rotary control to assign the brightness of your screen. So right now the step size is just one times. You can wind that up, so that means as you turn the dial, it's going to make larger increments. And I'm just going to, it's already at 100%, so I'm just going to turn it and wind it down. And it's actually controlling the slider on the camera hub. Let me show you what that looks like. So using the power of Ecamm, I've just switched between what I'm showing you. So here, now you'll see the brightness control of the camera hub software itself and obviously I can adjust this manually but if I turn the brightness control which you can't see but trust me I'm turning it now on the stream deck you can see that it's actually changing the slider on the brightness control of the camera hub. How cool is that? So it's a good reference point you know it's actually working and then you don't have to have the camera hub software open you can use your stream deck to control it fully. All right let's go back to the stream deck software and show you some more buttons. All right, let's get into the Stream Deck software again. I've removed the buttons that we assigned before because we're going to have a look at a couple of others. So let's look at prompter scrolling, which is a useful one. So obviously this is going to change the speed of your text that you've added to your Camera Hub software, which is your script. And then prompter control, let's add a button to play and pause this. Let's just drag this here into this button. So this is going to play and pause our script as before. And now down at the bottom, because I've got this scroll speed set to 79%, I'm going to slow this down. So you can see that my text is really starting to slow down in the prompter, which is great if I want to control what I'm reading and the speed that I'm reading. But it allows you to do many more control over the prompter as well, just by assigning different buttons. So let's just pause that for a second just by hitting this key up here. Let's go to the dials. You don't have to go to the dials, you can just drag any one in that you want. But now let's 
take a look at prompt to appearance because prompt to appearance is a multi-function action. And what I mean by that is the setting here has multiple configurations. So if I click this one, you've got font size, horizontal margin, vertical margin, the opacity, and line spacing. The opacity is useful if you've got something behind the text, as we'll see in a second. I'll just put a YouTube video behind there. But let's just take a look at a couple of these settings. So let's do font size. Now font size is going to change, obviously, the size of the font on the prompter. And you can see if I'm changing this rotary control here, I'm changing the size of my font. So that's good to get the font size um, how you want it to be set. So you're not seeing your eyes dart left and right when you're reading. Let's use the same button so we can copy this and paste it into here. Control C, Control V. Uh, the first one was font size. Uh, the second one is the horizontal margin. So now we can change the margin of this and you can see that I'm making it larger or squishing it in just by changing the rotor control. So this is great as well for aligning the margin in line with how you speak and how far away the prompter is from you. Again, you don't want to see your eyes darting left and right. So you can adjust this on the fly with the Stream Deck and then copy and paste again, or you can just drag it in. Let's just drag it in for giggles. We've already got uh, font size is the first one. Horizontal margin is the other one. Let's do the opacity. Now you'll see when I change the opacity that the screen is going darker and lighter. Let me just grab a Chrome window. Let's say it's a YouTube video in the back. I'll pop it in and then we'll change the opacity to show you how that looks. Let's grab something to go behind the text. I'll just pop my YouTube video over there. Let's go back to the opacity setting and you can see I'm changing the opacity now. So that is um, down to the bottom, zero, and now this is at a hundred percent. So you can see that I'm controlling how much of the screen behind the text wants to be shown through. And this is great for when you're on Zoom calls and things like that. So you can really sort of dial in how you want the video or whatever you're showing on your teleprompter to look as you're playing the text. So I'm going to press the play button here. Let's play it. I will adjust the speed of my scrolling with the first rotary dial like that. And then I'm just going to adjust the opacity. In fact, let me just speed that up a little bit so make it so you can actually see it's actually playing faster now. And then I'm adjusting the opacity and getting that dialed in. And I'm also changing the margin at the same time. So there you have it. I find it really useful to be using the Stream Deck instead of the Camera Hub software to control the prompter. I've only really scratched the surface. There are still a number of different workflows and functions that you can assign the Stream Deck to control your prompter with. But I found them really useful and I hope you find this video useful too. If you do want to know more about setting up your Stream Deck and you think this video is useful, and leave a comment below and I'll consider doing another video with some different workflows for using your Stream Deck, maybe with a prompter, maybe with other workflows as well. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do and I will see you in the next one.